Well, let's get a rocking and rolling. So just in case you don't know me, my name is Jen Hernandez. I'm in Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, I have a 10 year old son. I am a busy working mama. I work in mortgage world by day and I um, am a health and fitness coach by night and weekend and just an all around bubbly supportive friend is, is what I like to say I am. So I'm go, 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 go. However, if you met me, over four years ago, it would have been a complete different story. And it wasn't just because I weighed 130 pounds more because that's not even what this is about. It was about how I lived and went through every day. I would come, I would wake up, oops, I would wake up hitting snooze more than two hours a day. I actually had my husband get to the point where he told me that if I didn't stop hitting snooze, I would have to sleep in a separate room because he couldn't handle that distraction every morning. So imagine this, I'm hitting snooze for two hours every morning. I'm sludging into work late. I'm usually carrying a Dunkin' Donuts bag in one arm. I've got a soda or a, a coffee in the other. And I'm like looking down at the ground because I don't want to make eye contact with anyone. One, because I'm miserable. Two, because I'm embarrassed that I'm late and I'm uncomfortable. Um, so I'm sledging into work and then I'm leaving work. I was usually the last one to leave at the end of the day. I would end up coming home and I didn't have energy for my four-year-old son. I would throw myself on the couch. I would bundle myself up in a bunch of blankets and I would hit next on next. Netflix. And I very easily spent six hours a night straight until two in the morning watching Netflix, kind of numbing myself. I was just going through the motions and I was just, just a shell of myself. I call myself a Netflix zombie. I was honestly just going through the motions. My son would ask to play and I didn't have energy or time for him, but I was on the couch and I was there. Um, and so something changed because here I am four and a half years later and I worked a full day today. Um, I got to play with my son a little bit in the morning when he woke up and I'll be heading to my family when we finish this call. And I'm sincerely energized. I sincerely feel good and have energy. And so I wanna give you some of my secrets. Um, I am a health and fitness coach, but these tips are not really sent to only health and fitness. So don't worry, I'm not gonna make you do any, any burpees or exercises tonight. I'm not gonna make you hit the kitchen. Um, however, if you have some water, cheers. Um, always good to have some extra water going. Um, but what I wanna encourage you is that sometimes I think we really overestimate what we can do in a month and we put all this pressure on ourselves on what's gonna happen and what's gonna change and what's gonna get done. And we underestimate what we can do in a year. And so what I hope to encourage you is showing you how you want something. You're here, you're joining me tonight because you want more energy for something in your life. And I'm gonna give you some tips that you can apply that you can start taking action on tonight and tomorrow morning to help you create that energy for yourself. Um, yes, your food that you choose, your movement that you choose, all those things are important, but we can talk about that at another time if you're looking for some assistance there. So the first thing that I wanna encourage you is that energy is everything. I don't know, has anybody else ever had a job where they got a promotion and they weren't the highest qualified in the room? Maybe they got the promotion because they showed up differently. You were more positive, you're more energetic. And it's just, the energy that someone brings to it just kind of lifts you up. Hopefully my energy is making you smile and bringing you up a little bit more when you join me or when you visit one of my pages. Um, and so something that I wanna tell you, that's the first, first thing is to know what you want energy for. So the very first tip, write this down is, what got you started? What got you here tonight? What are you looking to create in your life that you want more energy for? Um, maybe it's that you want more friends or you want from more accountability. I'd love for you to throw in the chat what it is in your life that you're trying to accomplish that you want more energy for. Maybe it's your grandkids. Maybe it's because you want to lose weight. Maybe you want to get a promotion. Maybe you want to succeed in a business that you're building. Um, maybe you want to find a significant other to share the rest of your life with. So share with me, share with us in the chat what it is that got you started, what brought you here. For me, one of the things that got me started out of that cycle that I was in was my son. And so whenever I'm feeling a lack of energy, whenever I'm feeling a lack of motivation, it is to go back to what got me started and it was my son. And I look at my son and I look at him and I think, what kind of mom does he want? 
I look at the mom I gave back to him this last four and a half years, having more energy, being healthier, finding my passion, being a kind of lit from the inside out and, and what's that given to him. And so anytime I feel my energy draining and I know I need to step back, I look at him. So we want to know, number one, is what is it that is getting us started? What is it? And then we want to remind ourselves daily. So I love it. I see energy for motivation. Um, we have a granddaughter, have more energy to lose weight, to move around with the granddaughter, um, I'm sure. So energy to clean the house at the end of the day, yes. Um, wanting to lose weight, but also keeping apartment clean, having some routines and too tired to keep up for yourself. So take those things and then think about what it is. And then all you're going to do is implement a way to keep bringing it back to your focus every day. So for me, my phone, actually, when I plug it into a charger and unplug it, it says, I am an energetic source of light, empowering others to be their best. So every time I plug my phone in and unplug it, I hear that voice reminding me that I am energetic source of light, helping others get to their best. That may seem kind of silly to you, but sometimes being silly, it'll help you going. And it just gives me a little chuckle and that gives me a little push for the next couple moments. Something else that I do is every single morning, I write down what my mission or my focus is for the day. What am I working towards? towards. You want to have more energy with your for your granddaughter, get pictures of that granddaughter and put her somewhere so that every morning you're looking at that granddaughter's picture. Think about how it will feel to walk into a fresh, clean, organized apartment or how it will feel to go to sleep once your apartment is clean and then take the action to do that, just starting in just one little spot and you're going to feel you're just gonna feel that melt away and float. Like I just, I love the feel of a clean apartment. I don't necessarily enjoy cleaning, but once the house is clean, doesn't it feel good and light? And putting that focus on for yourself, being able to think about what you want and bring it back to that simplicity is going to help energize you. If you can put on some music and just clean part of that apartment room, you can get yourself going and see how that just just helps you get more energy. Just the thought of it helps me get more energy, just thinking about it. So you first tip is know what it is that you want more energy for and find a way to make it a focus. Um, our second tip is knowing what you can control when it comes to that. And almost as important, knowing what you can't control. I think so often we get ourselves stuck spending time and energy and sucking our energy out of our days for things that we can't control. So I'd love if you could throw in the chat some things that we can't control. Um, for example, I can't control what someone else says or does. I can't control what the weather is doing outside. I can control what time I get, exactly, Maria, I can't control other people. I can't control that. I can't control politics. I can do my part, but I can't control the result for everybody, right? Um, when we can't control those things, but we put all of our time and energy into them, it drains us, it takes out of us. So I think it's very, very important that we look at what is it that we can control and then focus on those actions that we can control. So if you, there were a couple people mentioning that they wanted to help clean, they wanted a clean environment, wanted to organize their house or clean their apartments. So something that you can control is when you come home to your space, where do you put your bag in your purse? Do you just throw the keys and let them go wherever and throw the bag and let it go wherever and take off your clothes and let it in the floor? Well, if you want a cleaner environment, you can make it easier on yourself and control that you use the hamper when you take your things off. You can control where you set your bag and where you hang your keys. If you're someone who's looking to, um, to lose weight or get healthier, you can control what food you purchase. You may not be able to control what's in the house, especially if you have a significant other like me who likes to eat some silly things that you maybe uh, wouldn't purchase if you didn't have to, right? So you might not be able to control what's in your house, but you can control what you buy for your house. You can control what you sit down and actually prepare and eat. You can control that. Those are things that we can control. Um, we can't control when we get called into work necessarily. Um, if you're on call 24 seven, that's a really rough job, 
we can't control that. The hard thing would be if we're on call 24 seven um, is can we control if we stay in that line of work? And is that where we wanna stay? And if we want to stay in that line of work where we are gonna be on call 24 seven, then we can control our attitude and how we handle our time outside of work to be best prepared for when we're called in. So if I'm someone who I would be on call 24 seven, when I'm having some downtime, rest is gonna be important and recovery, but also I can control if I prepare my meals or prepare my family, or I invest and get some extra help to take care of things outside of getting ready to be called in. Um, and so that's definitely, we can't control when it would happen. Just like I know those in the medical field, um, you really can't control when you get a lunch break because you can't control when your, your clients or your people that you're attending have an emergency, you get pulled into it, but you can control if you happen to have your water and food with you, or you can control your attitude and the energy that you bring to it. So really, really important. So now that we've gone over some things we can't control, let's throw a couple other things in the chat that we can control. Let's get excited about what we can control. I can control what time I go to sleep. Um, I can control how much Netflix I watch. I shared that I was a Netflix zombie. I sincerely would watch close to six hours a day. Let's say you're not anywhere near where I was. Let's say you only are watching two hours a day. If you just took one of those episodes, 30 to 48 minutes, depending on what show you're watching, take one of those episodes and use it as time to invest in yourself. Do you, can you imagine how dramatically different your life would be a year from now if you spent 30 to 48 minutes a day investing back into you instead of watching Next on Netflix? I mean, I don't know about you, but there are some shows that I laugh and have a lot of fun with, but there's also a lot of times I can't say that I walk away from a show feeling uplifted and ready to take on the world. I, I often walk away from a show thinking, well, I should just hit next because the day is kind of over. So, I mean, that's me. It could be totally wrong. If you know an uplifting show, there are some great, great ones. You know, let us know. We'll like check those out too. There's some great documentaries and educational shows as well. But that's not what I was watching. So if you're anything like I was, um, just kind of want to encourage you there. Um, yes, you can control, Dawn, I love that. You can control when you take some time to relax. You can, can control what you eat, Cheryl. I love that. Um, and how we respond to others, Maria, that's so important. Thank you so much. Um, and we can control how much we give to ourselves. There's actually Shonda Rhimes, The Year of Yes is an amazing book. And that's one thing that taught me is sometimes yes is saying no. Yes, saying yes to myself is saying no to something or someone else. And that's kind of where it comes into paying attention to what what can we control and what can we do? So our first tip was we got to know why we're here, what we showed up for, what got us started and keep it in the forefront, keep focusing on it. Yes, Sherry, it was a great book, right? Um, the next second thing is we want to know what we can control and focus on those actions. That's where the energy goes. So now you have a great little list and I would almost challenge you to keep a running list for yourself of stuff you can control to get excited about, to say, okay, I can control if I go for a walk today. I can control if I drink water today. I can control what I buy to eat. I can control what I eat and then celebrate those things as you get them and keep that list growing. So you can feel like you're in charge and you can feel like you're in power because you are. You can control a lot. I just find that for myself, I spent a lot of energy and time losing to things that I couldn't control, taking some time to be upset and hurt and, and lost time and energy to things that I had no control over anyway. Um, the third tip is know who you can really trust. And this is something, there's a little, uh, in one of the books, there's a little something called a one inch square. And it's like you write on a one inch by one inch square of paper who you can truly trust with your best interest. And I feel like, honestly, if you're religious, God, Jesus will be like right there at number one and then yourself. Like we really, I'm not saying to be untrustful and unwary of people, but as far as who you can expect to show up for you, put all your trust in yourself, in your higher power. Um, 
because if you put a lot of trust or energy in other places that you don't necessarily know if they're going with you, they could totally take you somewhere else and take all your time and energy. So for example, um, let's say you get a whole bunch of friends together and you're gonna, gonna plan some kind of big outing. Has anybody ever planned a big party or a big outing and you were putting in all this energy and time with a whole bunch of people and they weren't really bought in as much as you and then you ended up being the one that gave all the money, all the time, all the energy and kind of showed up and there was not a, a many of you there. That's what I mean by knowing who you can trust. Know where you're spending your time. Um, and for me, that is a super, super important. Um, you can follow, go down a path of following the wrong places to the wrong things and kind of be totally set off to a total sidetrack and lose some time for yourself. So I just wanna encourage you to know who you can trust and who you're sharing that with. Of course, I hope we trust our spouses and, and our close friends and our inner circles, but I just wanna have like the real, the real gut check of who can I trust and then who am I measuring myself up to? What does my creator think of me? What is it those people, that square of people think of me and letting go everybody else? Instead, I don't know about you, I'm a recovering people pleaser. So I'm someone who would always be worried if I was offending someone or worried if I was gonna rub someone the wrong way. And I spent all this extra time and energy when in reality, I really only had to focus on who, who is it that I truly trust? What does my creator think of what I'm doing? Am I doing something in the right? Am I doing something with a good intent? If I am and it's on my heart and it's for me, I can let go of the stress of all the other people that I'm thinking I need to please because we're never gonna please everybody. And I don't think we're meant to either. I think we're meant to be all different and bring different things to the table. So I'd love for you to, to have that one inch by one inch square of who can you really trust and who is in this with you, especially when it comes to where you're protecting your energy and where you're trying to grow something for yourself, whether it's hitting a fitness goal, working on your house, building your business, whatever this may be for you. Um, number four for me, I feel is the most important tip. So if for some reason you didn't write down one, two, and three, number four, you got to write down number four, what is your definition of success? What does success even look like to you? If you're someone who wants to lose five pounds and you're comparing your journey to me losing 130, you could totally tell yourself you did not succeed when you lose that five pounds because you didn't lose 130. You didn't have 130 to lose. You didn't wanna lose 130, you wanted to lose five. But because you were comparing your journey to my level of success, you totally are making yourself look like you can't achieve it. And I almost feel like a lot of depression and a lot of emotional negativity and stress comes from not knowing what you want and not having that level of success for yourself. Because let's think about it. When I go back four and a half years ago and I was hitting snooze for two hours and I was hitting next on Netflix every night, I didn't have any passion or purpose. I didn't have any hope. I didn't have any direction. I had no clue what I wanted. I knew I was uncomfortable in my body. I knew I didn't want my husband touching me. I knew that I was cranky and miserable at my job. I knew I was spending long hours working. I didn't have any direction. I had no vision of what success looked for me. So this is one I really, really, really would love for you to throw some things in the chat. What does success look like to you? Success is not somebody else's metric. If you are here because you're building a business and success to you looks like earning $100 so that you can earn your company's product for free, that focus on that success. Don't compare yourself to someone who's working to earn a million dollars and replace their full-time job, right? Like compare what it is that you want. Look at what would make you happy. And then let's think about, I love that, Carrie. Thank you so much. And I want to dig that a little deeper and take that financial freedom to what does that financial freedom look and feel like? Go even deeper with that. Who is the Carrie that walks into the room? What energy does she bring to the room? What is she doing differently in her day when she's free? What does that look like? Um, I think like, so we can take like a comparison to Disney. We're planning a Disney trip at the end of the year for, for my, my personal team. And we're looking at different things that we can achieve for it. And I'm just thinking about if I were to say, if you worked an extra two hours a week and it earned you 
an extra hundred dollars. How exciting does that sound? Well, hundred dollars, okay. Maybe we'll order DoorDash an extra time. Maybe we'll order Uber Eats. Maybe I'll pay the gas bill early. You know, okay, hundred dollars. Now, what if I said, if you stay at work two hours later every day, and at the end of the year, I'll send you to Disney with your family. That has a little bit more of a creation. That has a little bit more of an excitement. So I want you to throw that on your financial freedom carry. Think about what does that look like for you? Does that mean sleeping in? Or does that mean getting up before your alarm and doing something radically different with your day? Does it mean living in a different part of the country? Does it mean spending a different amount of time with your kids or your family? Or like, what does that look like for you? Dig in a little deeper there. Um, some other ideas of what success can look like. Success can look like loving yourself, feeling confident in your skin. Success can look like, you know, um, not having to, to borrow from a credit card at the end of the month. Success can look like however you want to look at like, but this is where you need to define your success to you and put it out there. Does that make sense? Can you see where otherwise you're like doing all the risks of life. You have all the responsibility, you have all the exhaustion, all the stress, all the distraction, everything that comes with living in, in this day and age, but you have no joy or reward from it because you don't know what your metric of success is. And this kind of goes along with who can you really trust. Someone can actually like take you along their version of success and really drag you out to somewhere where you weren't even looking to go. And so I feel this is so, so important. So I love this traveling the world, getting nails done, not having to worry about it, not having to check the bank. How freeing does that sound? Not having to check the bank every time that you, you make a payment or do something. I love that, I love it. Um, feeling better physically, so you can have positive energy towards your family, absolutely. And, and what do those interactions look like? Um, how do you feel? Like, I know I used to like pull away from my husband and say, don't touch me. And now I'm like, hey, give me a hug. Look, I have a new oblique. You know, I'm like, give me a little, you know, give me a little hug. Like, come here, ooh, feel my thigh, feel my, you know, I'm leaning in. And how much, oh, how much does that bring to my relationship that wasn't there before? I love it. And these are all personal, there's no judgment. There is no comparison. And then the, the last one, number five that I have for you to help with, with creating and maintaining your energy is collaborating with others. Collaborating with others who have that same vision and what they're working for is so important. So important. Hisan and I have um, met each other on Instagram in a collaboration group and we've done a fun um, five week motivation series going live in the mornings, Monday mornings, the last five weeks. And we've just like ping ponged and gotten more energy back off of each other. And it's, it's something that you can do that inside your subgroup. So let's say that you run a business, you have a, a, a business that you're running already and there's team members in that group. Collaboration can look like reaching out to one of them and kind of tag teaming them. If you're looking for a health journey in your private in your private support groups, I offer free mentoring along with the, the tools that I offer in, in health and fitness. And I'm collecting, I'm connecting all those people together. You can team up with someone else. You can team up with a family member or a friend and kind of buddy up. Collaborating looks like bringing the best out of each other. It looks like sharing something and knowing that you're all going to walk away a little bit, a little bit more energized, a little bit of a bigger smile, um, and being able to kind of partner up and get yourself to that next level. I'm sure that we have all heard somewhere along the lines, if your friends jumped off a bridge, would you too? Well, probably. Probably, like probably we would be get psyched up enough about the bungee cord. I tell you something I thought I would never do that I did was walk on fire. <laughs> I never thought I would walk on fire, but I found myself in an auditorium down in Miami, Florida, and there was 20 some thousand other people there and we were all cheering and we were going to go out back uh, of the stadium and walk across across fire coals with Tony Robbins and Sure enough, I got myself hyped enough and we all went, I walked across fire, didn't even get a blister from it. <laughs> and I'll tell you, sitting here alone in my, in my house, there's zero chance of me walking across fire. 
there's no fire out there. There's no, you know, there, that's not going to happen. However, getting myself around a room of positive people that are all moving toward the same direction, you will probably end up going that way. So that's why our collaboration, who we spend time with, who we confide in, who we trust, all these things really, really kind of circle in and give us where we are going. And so I love the fact like somebody here could probably even buddy with you because they're here wanting more and being able to link in, link arms and grow and go from there. Um, so I just want to see if Feel free to ask any questions in the chat. I'm gonna give a little recap. And then like I promise, I even made it to the, the under 30 minute mark. Um, but I just wanna encourage you that um, number one, what got you started? What do you want? And then find a way, set a reminder on your phone, write a list, put that granddaughter's picture somewhere where you can see it. Um, number two, focus on what you can control and get that control list growing and growing with you. Number three, Think about who you can really trust and in fact, what matters, who, whose opinion matters, whose opinion of you matters um, and really focus on that so you can let go of everybody else's words and opinions. Number four, defining what success looks like to you. What does that look like? And guess what? That can evolve every day. Maybe you had no inspiration to lose weight. Maybe you had no inspiration to travel the world, but you came on this call, you saw someone else's idea. You're like, that sounds pretty good. I think I might wanna go for that. You can evolve your level of success, what you define as success every day. My, for me, being successful means that I reached someone with positivity today. It means that I got to connect with somebody else. It wasn't that I made a sale. I can't necessarily control what sales I make, right? So my level of success is by how many people did I reach? How many potential conversations did I make? Those are things that I can measure and guarantee. Um, number five, collaboration. Finding others, linking arms with others who are also going in the same direction as you and being willing to put the work in and lean with it. Kind of a, a post that I made last week that I was talking about um, is in, in the United States, we have want the word want i want something but often want can have one of two definitions like if i said who wants a million dollars i doubt anybody's going to say no to that i mean think of all the good that we could do with a million dollars we could pay off debt for ourselves and our family we could start organizations and help others we could give to our charities that we care about we could make a huge difference why wouldn't you want a million dollars right we want it now, who wants a million dollars that's willing to put the work in and show up even when it's not tough, even when it's tough, even when it's not fun necessarily every day? Is everybody going to show up for that? No. But we all said we wanted a million dollars. That's because sometimes want is a wish and sometimes want is I'm willing to work for it. And so what we want to focus on is if we're wanting it, if we really want energy, if we really want that better life, if we really want what we want, we need to work for it. Everything in our life we work for. We had to work to learn how to, how to walk, how to go to the bathroom, how to talk. We had to learn to work to get ourselves through school. Everything we had to work for. There's no difference now just because we're adults. And, and if anything, I think it's almost harder now that we're adults because now it's all on us. When I was a kid, my mom would tell me, go clean up your room go do your homework, go eat your veggies, go drink your water. Now that I'm an adult, I get to tell me, <laughs> I have to be the one to tell me, not my mom. So I um, wanna encourage you that you are not alone in the struggle, but you are looking for something. You are trying to create it and that action plus time will always get you results. So keep showing up and investing in yourself, like giving yourself this 30 minutes tonight. I thank you so much. I'm just gonna check the chat. Like I said, no question is off limits. So I'd love to hear if anybody has any questions, if anybody has anything else that they want to share, if they're thinking of, you know, they need some help identifying what success looks like to them. Um, and Yes. Uh, we are. Yes. Um, so I do have I do have some news coming. We do have some news coming. So if you're here, you are on my email list that you will see the news. Um, Hisan and I will be kicking off a workshop coming in uh, in May. And I forgot to pull up 
the link of the name of it. But we will be kicking off those details and giving you some sneak peeks and hints throughout April. So you'll want to get on um, our email list. You all should be now that you're here. So thank you for that. Um, and we will get you um, get you the details as that comes out. We'll be having our workshop kick off um, the first week of May. So want to get, get on the link there for April, get you set up. We have some um, VIP early bird specials we'll be sharing more about. And uh, I think that's it. Other than that, I don't see any other questions. So I'm looking forward to seeing where, where you go from here and what is next. So my next action step for you is take some time when we hang off, before you turn on This Is Us or whatever's popular right now, before you go and scroll Facebook or Instagram or before you end your night, um, I wanna encourage you to take some time to write down what success looks like to you. Not what it looks like to me, not what it looks like to Hisan, not what it looks like to, to someone else in your life. What does it look like for you so that you have a direction and an excitement to start putting some energy and focus towards tomorrow? Um, and then that will identify what your next steps are. I can help you with some of those next steps as we come out as well, because knowing what success looks like for you, we can connect you to the right person that will help you take those next steps. If you are not looking for a health and fitness journey, it is not going to help you necessarily to join me on that. If you're looking for organization or cleaning or, or some other kind of training, we can absolutely connect you to the right person that will, will help you bring that. Okay. okay, wonderful. Well, I'm so excited to see where you go from here. I would absolutely love, love, love if you would share with me privately what your definition of success looks like so I can just encourage you on your next steps and to show up. Just note every little step counts. This was a huge investment in yourself. You just gave yourself 30 minutes, five tips to kind of create and go towards energy. And I didn't even make you exercise. So, so I thank you so much, so much for joining me. I'm looking forward to seeing more and seeing how we grow and continue. And I hope you have a wonderful night. I'm going to take off the recording right now in case anybody has a question they wanted to answer or chat about um, without the recording. And then we'll just go from there. So thanks so much.